sequences from home interface. Hey, what's up guys? It's Harlan. I'm here with another video. In today's video, we are checking out three disturbing true moss horror stories. This is going to be interesting. It's by Mr. Nightmare. You guys don't know who he is. He's a pretty dope YouTuber. So let's go ahead and check it out. Now wait, hold on. Let's see at the beginning. Wow. All audio recordings used in this video are copyright protected. Use of this audio without express permission is not allowed and will be illegally pursued if necessary. Re-uploading any of these videos to YouTube or other websites will be acted upon. I see. This is a reaction, so it shouldn't be a big deal. For the past three years or so, I've worked as an overnight security guard at a mall. It used to be that the mall didn't require an overnight person, but vandalism started to become a problem. Most of the time I would drive around the parking lot all night listening to my car radio. Now and then I'd kick some skateboarders out of the park. Sears? Okay, Sears is already like, their, their company's like dying out. It's pretty much over with. <laughs> can lie or investigate a suspicious person barking about. Other than that, I'd say the job was pretty tame. Maybe three months in, I experienced something a little bit stranger. Okay. I noticed that the light to one of the shops was on while driving around the parking lot. This was surprising to me considering no one had snuck past me as of yet. So, of course, I parked the car and headed inside the mall to catch the potential thieves. As I approached the shop, I did hear the sound of anyone rummaging through the inventory. Sure enough, the shop was empty. As a matter of fact, even the security gate was still down. What? Only the shop owners had access to the security gates, so I couldn't really do anything about the light being on. I headed back out to my car. I'd say an hour went by with no incident, but as I was circling around the entrance to the mall, I saw another light was on inside. Inside the mall, it was the same scene repeated. The light was on to the shop, but the security gate was still closed. I even tugged on the damn thing to see if someone heard me coming and just hit for- Bro, this is scary. This is getting scary, bro. This is getting scary. Man. Nope. It was locked. I heard a click from behind me while investigating. Oh my god. This light was no longer on. Maybe it was my mind playing tricks on me, but I swear I saw someone run behind the counter and hide. I think about now is a good time to mention I was running on three hours of sleep for the past 48 hours. I was blaming these occurrences just simply on the lack of sleep. I shined my flashlight into the shop and scanned the area. Nothing that I could see. Behind me was another click. Once again, the light to the shop was off, and this time I know I saw someone standing in there. So I simply called out, you can either leave with me or you can leave with the police. They didn't move, just stood next to the light switch. I approached the gate and turned my light in the direction of the light switch. And there was no one standing there. I did see that a clothes rack was fairly close to the switch, so maybe the light was catching the clothes just right and was casting a shadow. That was the most logical explanation I could think of, at least. I left them all. Oh my I was God. pretty spooked for the events of that night, but after a few months, they were pretty much out of my mind. My patrols were nothing special for a while after that. I think my next incident happened around my one year anniversary as a guard. It was winter, and I was inside of the mall checking the pipes. second incident? Yes, I was on security duty, but the owners decided to save a buck by having me inspect certain things as well. It was whatever. I was heading to one of the bathrooms to relieve myself when I heard a toilet flush. Bruh, hearing a toilet flush in a mall like that is like the worst thing to happen to you, bro. That is the worst thing ever. Jump a little more than I would like to admit. Inside of the bathroom, I didn't see anyone. The toilets in the mall were motion activated, much like every other mall in the world. I checked all the stalls, empty. I'll spare you the details, but after checking the stalls, I took a seat in one of them. I had a YouTube video playing on my phone while I was sitting, and I heard a tapping sound coming from the stall next to me. I glanced to my left, 
saw a pair of shoes standing with the toes pointing towards me. Slowly, I brought my eyes up above the stall. Sure enough, there was the tallest man I had ever seen standing over the stall, staring down at me. Oh my god! Oh my god! No, 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 fuck this, fuck this, fuck this. Mr. Nightmare! Stop! Oh my god! He think the way he said it, bro. He saw me notice him. He ducked back down beneath the stall. I hopped up and kicked in the door to the neighboring stall. The damn thing was empty, except for a pair of shoes sitting in the same spot I had seen them. My heart was thumping like crazy. I went back to my car as quickly as possible after that. If I remember correctly, this happened at around 4 in the morning. Once again, I accredited all of this to my lack of sleep. I was just happy that I had the next day off. Hold on, bro. This is this is getting too real. <laughs> My friend and I once went to the infamous abandoned Rolling Acres Mall in Akron, Ohio. I'll call my friend Jake for this story for privacy reasons. We went at like eleven o'clock at night on a Wednesday night, since we didn't have school the next day. Okay. We snuck in through some door which had been jammed in by previous visitors. It was completely pitch black in there, obviously. We turned out our flashlights for a few seconds just to really take in how dark it was. We explored the lower level, then went up to the second level by climbing up an escalator. As we were shining the flashlights into old closed off stores, we heard a bang like sound come from further down this upper level. I got scared and asked Jake if it could be security or cops. He said he doubted it, probably just more people like us exploring. But we did still try to move in the opposite direction from the sound, just in case. We were right by the JC in the mall when we heard another similar bang like sound like from before, this time louder and closer. Jake and I turned off our flashlights now. Just oh my see. god. Oh my god. Who that could be. No. With our lights out, we did the best we could to make a little distance between us and the sound without banging into walls or anything. Suddenly, I heard a came from a little further in front of me. It's kind of muffled. <laughs> so I assumed it was Jake calling me ahead. Nah, bro. I kept hearing <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> so I kept following the sound of it. I got close enough. I whispered to Jake, where do we go now? He didn't answer. So I started feeling around for him, and I found what I believed to be his shoulder. Only the fabric of the jacket I felt did not match the fabric of the coat I knew Jake was wearing. I turned on the flashlight and screamed when I looked up and saw the person I was holding on to wasn't Jake, but rather some tall guy wearing a beanie and a face mask. The man grabbed me and put me in a headlock as he tried dragging me. Jake came out from the darkness and landed one clean punch to the man's face, which gave me just enough time to take off as he let go of me. Jake and I ran to the same place we came in from. When we got outside, we continued running until we got to the car. We didn't stop to catch our breath just yet, though. Jake booked it out of the abandoned parking lot, and only then did we feel relief. I gave Jake a firm handshake as I left and caught my breath, thanking him for potentially saving my life. Bruh. That's scary. Now, story three, let's hope story three is fucking insane. I used to work in a 24 Bro, I gotta give you your credit. Mr. Nightmare, if you see this reaction video, oh my gosh, you did such great work here, man. It's at a general store in a mall in South Carolina. So while the mall itself would close around 9.30, our store would stay open all night. Okay. There were two entrances to the store, one from inside the actual mall itself, and then a back door that people could enter through after the mall closed. Past 9.30, I would always have to shut the gate, separating the store from the mall. Given that this was a smaller store, it was never really busy in the deep night hours, which also made my job very uneventful most of the time. But there was one night shift that turned out to be anything but uneventful. It was towards the middle of my shift. The gate between the store and the mall was down, but I could still see through it, obviously, into the dark half-lit hallway of the mall. Okay. The mall always had night lights on, which were much dimmer, but bright enough for the security guards to see what's going on in the cameras. I was doing my own thing. 
thing, organizing the shelves, making sure everything was neat, when I heard a rattle at the metal cage. I looked and saw some guy standing on the other side, grasping the gate with Bruh. his hands. Bruh. Bruh. At first, I thought it was the security guard on duty. It was the only logical explanation, even though it was rare to ever see them walking around. But as I got closer and asked if there was a problem, I realized it wasn't a security guard. It was just some random man. He was wearing a dirty black and white plaid shirt and very baggy blue jeans. Most notably though, what made this exceptionally strange was that he was just looking up at the ceiling. I inched a little closer and again asked if something was wrong and if he needed help, but he just kept looking up and shaking the gate. There was some kind of protocol I was supposed to follow in the case of something like this in order to get them all security. However, I didn't know how. I didn't know what number to dial. I didn't know how to work any kind of intercoms. So all I could really That do is weird. Imagine someone just standing there shaking the gate and he's just looking up at the ceiling. That's some possessed shit, bro. Was shut it out. I turned my back to the creepy man and went back to my register behind the counter, as far away from him as possible. Unfortunately. The shelves are angled perpendicularly to the counter, not parallel, so the man at the gate was in direct line of sight for me still. He finally seemed to back away, like literally walked backwards though, with his head still up at the ceiling. All that was going through my mind was where could security be? It was to my understanding that there would be at least one person watching the cameras at night. Anyway, I tried to just move past it, resuming my cleaning activities. I couldn't help but look back outside to the mall every once in a while, though. Thankfully, he was gone now. Eventually, someone came into the shop. I heard the back door slide open. I was in between two shelves and couldn't see them, so I continued with my work. After finishing up sweeping the aisle, I went back to the register to wait for the customer. I saw the customer now. They were standing at the end of the last aisle to the left, the alcohol aisle. He was looking up. First, I thought he was looking at the top shelf, so I looked away. I only looked at him for maybe a second. I bent down under the counter to put the broom and dustpan underneath. And when I stood back up to look at the customer, I felt like my heart nearly stopped. He was looking at me with a smile. Not a grin, but a wide lip smile. It also sank in right away now that this was the same man that was out of the mall from earlier. Only Whoa! I would be shook, boy. Boy. Now he'd apparently taken off his black and white plaid shirt. I stared at him and he stared at me. And I think this went on for 30 seconds. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I had actually <laughs> frozen up in fear. The face he gave, the smile, was a pure look of horror. Something straight from a horror film or someone's nightmares. I felt like he stared into my soul. That's I opened my mouth to speak and my voice trembled. <laughs> I think I said, get out or I'm calling the cops. He didn't move. He didn't even bat an eye. I ran to the back room and unlocked the door so I could call my manager. She wouldn't pick up after several attempts, though. When I gave up, I heard a tap at the door. Not a knock, just a very gentle tap. What the fuck? Bro. I sat like a nervous wreck in the back room for a good five minutes. Oh, God! Could be anywhere but there. But when the fear of this person stealing a bunch of items and losing my job became greater than the actual fear of the person, I stepped back outside and looked around. But the man was gone. He was gone for good this time. Our shop has cameras, so they call all of them. When my shit ended, I told my manager about what happened and showed her the video footage. She was shocked and kind of freaked out herself. I only worked there for another month after that, then moved on. Bro. Yo. And the, the video's still going, bro. That was tough. Tough. That was tough, guys. Alright, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Overall, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really, really good video. Um, Mr. Nightmare. Yeah. Bro. I hope you see this reaction, you see my reaction. I am truly freaked out. Like, you know when you get those goosebumps or you feel like 
your body becomes completely empty and you feel this certain like you have this feeling of fear like genuine fear that's how I felt watching this that shit was dummy scary bro especially when in the bathroom stall where the guys just stand oh my god that made my heart fucking drop that made my heart drop anyways guys hope you enjoyed this video thanks so much make sure you subscribe and peace me <laughs>